the world's most honored watch is Longines. Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnall Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnall, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening. This is... May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. Donald I. Rogers, an editor of the New York Herald Tribune, and Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Mr. Edward T. McCormick, president of the New York Curve Exchange. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Mr. McCormick, tonight I'm sure that our audience would like to hear you talk about money and how to save some of it. Now first, sir, what is the New York Curve Exchange? Well, Mr. Huey, uh, the New York Curb Exchange is the second largest stock exchange in the United States. It has 1,600 member and branch offices throughout the country and a ticker network of 700 machines. It provides the market for in excess of 800 corporate securities. I see. Now, you have been a member of the Securities Exchange Commission, and uh, you are the manager of this uh, big trading post. Now tonight, I would like to envision uh, one of our listeners who has a thousand or two thousand dollars a year to invest, and he's interested in saving it, and perhaps in making a little money out of it. Now, uh, would you advise him to buy stocks now? I would say that everyone should not buy stocks at this time. The purchase of common stocks involves the assumption of a calculated risk, and not all people in this country are in a position to assume that risk. Well, we would assume, uh, Mr. McCormick, that <clears throat> this man has a little money to invest, uh, or to save, if you prefer to call it that. Now, do you think that the purchase of stocks uh, is the best way to save money these days? I think that stocks should become a part of the usual individual's investment portfolio. That's assuming that he can has adequate capital to invest in other forms of assets. Well, now, what, what, in your opinion, should be the first thing that a man invests in after he has a dollar that he doesn't have to spend for something to eat? I would say that the first investment should be in life insurance. Well, now, do you, would you advise our, our people today to invest in life insurance I would say that up to a certain point, the individual should buy life insurance. I do not believe that after having obtained adequate protection through life insurance, that he should follow the purchase of life insurance as an investment program. Now, you think that, that life insurance should be bought first as a protection, and perhaps only as a protection. That is correct. And not as an investment, not as a way to make money. That's correct. Life insurance provides no hedge against inflation, does it, sir? Well, in view of the type of the investment programs of the insurance companies, I feel that uh, it is not adequate for an all-round all investment program. Uh, conversely, uh, common stock, in your opinion, uh, does provide an inflationary hedge? I would say that after the individual has uh, purchased sufficient life insurance and, and fixed income securities that he should then purchase good, sound, seasoned common stocks. There's perhaps one other thing you would advise. I assume that you would advise a man who has a family to buy a home. Is this a good time for a man to buy a home? Well, Mr. Huey, it is my opinion that uh, we are going to continue to have inflation in this country, and I think that it would be a wise thing for individuals to buy commodities, and a home is certainly a worthwhile commodity, and I feel that even today, uh, the purchase of a home would be a good investment. Now, by, uh, 
By inflation, you mean simply that next year, a dollar will be worth less than it is today. It is my opinion that uh, the trend of inflation has not reached its peak and that we will continue to have further inflation. And if you can buy something today, it will be worth a few more dollars next year, won't it? Well, to state it conversely, it'll take more dollars to buy it later on than it will now. So this is probably time to buy it. Which is probably true of a good many issues of stock, is it not, sir? That's correct. It's my feeling that uh, having taken care of the basic uh, investments of insurance and uh, debt securities, that you should buy common stocks in those companies that are particularly engaged in the purchase, extraction, or development of commodities, metals, oils, and such uh, commodities as that, because you are indirectly, through that device, investing in commodities. Now, do you find a reaction among the people of America in, uh, in running to uh, common stocks, to your commodities that you're selling? as a hedge, as a, as a place to hide a haven against inflation? Uh, if I understand you, are people doing that today? Yes, I, oh, are more very, people doing it very, today. Very decidedly, the uh, selectivity of the market, uh, the movement in the securities of those companies that are engaged in those types of operations clearly indicate that that is the present thinking of the investors How in about country. the volume? Are more people trading in, in securities today than before? Well, very definitely. Uh, of course, I think that the uh, character of the securities markets has changed uh, rather markedly in recent years. I feel that uh, people are now buying to hold stocks. Uh, the uh, participation of the professionals in the market has diminished very, very considerably. There's to less speculation, in other words. That is or correct. Or to be vulgar, less gambling. That, that is correct. Today, a $10,000 investment that goes into General Motors is apt to stay in General Motors for a considerable period, whereas uh, more typically in the earlier years of the 29s and early 30s, the 10000 may have been in and out of the market a number of times. All right. Now, Mr. McCormick, the enemies of our system, our capitalistic system, say that the stock exchanges serve no purpose. Now, I know it's customary for you to reply and for other people in the, in the profession to reply that you help create new money, uh, new money for expansion of old businesses and creation of new businesses. But the fact is, you've just mentioned General Motors, uh, most of your business is trading in securities that have been on the market for a number of years. Uh, now, what would you say to these critics of our system uh, is your major contribution to our capitalistic system? What, what would you say to justify your job and your, and your curb exchange? Well, I would say, uh, Mr. Rogers, that the existence of an exchange market makes the purchase of securities attractive. Initially, it is the custom or the tradition in this country to float securities in what is known as the over-the-counter market. However, I feel that the acceptance of the securities by investors at that initial stage is bolstered largely by the fact that they know that after the initial distribution, they will have available an exchange market where people from one end of the country to the other can get together to buy or sell in a common marketplace. It gives them a chance, in other words, later on to sell what they've bought if they want to. Exactly. They have a place to go where someone wants to buy in case they want to sell and conversely. Right. Uh, now, much has been said. Our listeners know that government, and they've heard a lot about government going into the stock business and regulating it. Now, it's true that there's been more and more government regulation since 1933, hasn't it? That's correct. And uh, in your opinion, has that been uh, to the good? Uh, ha has government regulation uh, had a good effect on Wall Street and, and stock trading? I don't believe there is any segment of the securities business that would deny the fact that the regulation that has been passed in this country has been beneficial, not only to the investors, but to the industry itself. I know of no important or responsible group in the investment banking field that wouldn't se would not look with considerable chagrin on any attempt to reverse or abolish those regulations. As a matter of fact, it has brought your your uh, 
members of the curb exchange a good deal more business, has it not? It made little people like me willing to invest in the market. There isn't the slightest doubt about it. The restoration of the confidence of the American investing public in the securities business has been advanced considerably, greatly, by the adoption of these regulations. Well, now, has, has government reduced the risk that a man with $1,000 takes when he goes down to Wall Street to buy something? Yes, I think he has. Uh, the government has done two things. It has set up standards by which the game is played. In other words, those in the business must have certain capital behind them. They must execute transactions in a certain manner. And secondly, the other important thing is that they have required that the country be literally flooded with information about the corporations that are traded in our markets. Now, Mr. McCormick, if I understand what you've told our listeners tonight, you've told us first that you believe that dollars will be less valuable next year than they are today. That's correct. Therefore, uh, a man with some money to invest should first uh, protect his family with life insurance. He should try to buy a home. And then if he has some more money, he should invest it in something that's likely to be worth more dollars next year than it is this year. That's stating it very well. And uh, I'm sure that our, our listeners have uh, appreciated your being here tonight and have appreciated your advice. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. Donald I. Rogers and Mr. William Bradford Huey. Our distinguished guest was Mr. Edward T. McCormick, president of the New York Curb Exchange. A new Longines honor, the exclusive official watch for the Olympic Winter Games at Oslo in Norway is Longines, the world's most honored watch. And the watches employed will be the world famous Longines Olympic timer which registered time to a tenth or a fifth of a second. And new timing equipment recently developed in the Longines Research Laboratory and made in the Longines Factory, which registers time to the one hundredth of a second with the greatest accuracy ever attained. And it is worth repeating that all Longines watches and timing equipment used in the Olympic Winter Games are Longines conceived Longines designed and Longines manufactured. The experience which Longines gains in creating watches of high precision for scientific purposes, such as the timing of the Olympic Winter Games, contributes to the perfection of all Longines watches. Proof of the superiority of Longines watches is found in the public honors which Longines watches have won, including 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. So if you wish to own just about the finest watch made anywhere in the world, your choice might well be Longines, the world's most honored watch. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight again, inviting you to be with us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines, sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem Agency for Longines with Norwalk. This is the CBS Television Network.